Coming up on the show, a doctoral student in USM School of Education played a unique role in Sunday Super Bowl kickoff. We'll tell you who she is and what she did at the top of the show. I'm Stephanie Smith. New technology is affecting academic learning here on the USM campus. I'll have more on this story on SM2 Media. We have the latest news about incoming severe weather coming up into our weekend. All of this and more right here on SMTV. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Good evening, USM. I'm Garrett Grove. And I'm Jeterica Wilson. Thank you for tuning into SMTV. On Sunday, there were a lot of noteworthy sites at the Super Bowl. A USM grad student was one of them. Faber Shea Flint, a doctoral student, tossed the official coin for Super Bowl 57. SM2 reporter Cordavion Carter gives us the scoop on why Flint was there. USM student Faber Shea Flint a doctoral candidate in higher education administration had the honor of tossing the official coin before Super Bowl 57 between the Philadelphia Eagles and Kansas City Chiefs in Glendale, Arizona on Sunday. And to flip the coin, Fabergé J. Flynn. She was one of four Pat Tillman scholars named as honorary coin toss captains who were selected for their dedication and vision to create a better tomorrow. Flint became eligible for the Pat Tillman Scholarship after her husband, Staff Sergeant Brian A. Lewis, was killed in March 2006 during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Through her loss, Flint found her purpose in helping others in higher education. She has created a scholarship in memory of her late husband and founded an educational consulting firm geared towards helping institutes of higher education foster learning environments that value diversity and inclusion for marginalized students. It is tails. Kansas City has won the toss. They will defer their choice for the second half. She hopes to complete her doctorate at USM in May 2024. This has been Cordavion Carter signing out. SN2 Media. After many delays, the long anticipated Moe's Southwest Grill opened this past Friday at USM. Since then, long lines around lunchtime have begun to rival that of Chick-fil-A in Freshens on campus. SM2 reporter Simeon Gates was there when it officially opened and has this report. A Moe's Southwest Grill location opened at Southern Miss this past Friday, and students lined up across the Cochrane Center to get a bite. Moe's is an American restaurant chain serving Mexican and Tex-Mex cuisine. The Moe's location at Southern Miss is located in the Cochrane Center, right outside of the cafeteria. This Moe's has been in the making for over a year, though construction was delayed due to supply chain issues. However, the delay did not hamper student excitement. Aramark's operations director, Marcus White, spoke to SM2 on the opening day. Look, uh, um, we just looked around at all the, camp all the locations we have here on campus and tried to put in something that we didn't have already and we came up with a Moe's. I think it's gonna be a good asset to the, to the campus um, and I'm just ready to see what it holds in the future. That was Simeon Gates reporting. Southern Miss University Forum made a grand return this past Tuesday by welcoming the accomplished Dr. Talithia Williams. SM2 reporter Abigail Troth has more on that in this report. USM students are gathered here tonight at Bennett Auditorium to witness mathematician Talithia Williams at a university forum. Dr. Talithia Williams is an established mathematician and scientist, having worked for NASA, the NSA, and has been a research partner with the World Health Organization. Dr. Williams' focus usually lies with statistics. Most of her research is devoted to creating statistical models that emphasize the spatial and temporal structure of data and applying them to real-world issues. Dr. Williams has received multiple STEM degrees from Howard University, Rice University, and Spelman College. Dr. Williams has had a massive impact on students and encourages them to work as hard as they can within their fields. Like today was really important to me because we're going to see Talitha Williams, who is a very, I would say, very important, at least to me personally, black woman in STEM. 
The next University Forum will take place on March 21st, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in Bennett Auditorium and will feature the feminist author Roxanne Gay. Abigail Troth, SM2 News. We still have a lot left in the show. Be sure to stay tuned for the latest news, sports, and weather affecting Hattiesburg. And speaking of weather, we'll go ahead and give you a heads up of what to expect in the coming days. Today, you most likely experience rain and humidity in the afternoon hours. With a high of 78 and a low of 65, it was fortunately not too cold. For the rest of the week, that will change as our low is 41 and our high is 73 on Thursday. For tomorrow, also expect some thunderstorms in the forecast. And if you have not already done so, be sure to subscribe to Eagle Alerts on your phone to get the latest information about severe weather. Into the weekend, it will continue to get colder, but there should be no rain in the Pine Belt. Though it starts to get back into the 70s starting on Monday, you won't have to worry about rain until we get into Tuesday. Even if it doesn't rain on you on Tuesday, be sure to pack an umbrella for next Wednesday. We'll be right back after a short break. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. The world is changing, and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its public relations master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. I just feel so good. GPT is causing faculty and staff to rethink how they will construct writing assignments. SM2 reporter Stephanie Smith has more on the story. Administration and faculty across the university are concerned about the academic integrity among students and the use of the new AI chat GPT. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence tool that helps students complete and answer writing assignments with no effort. ChatGPT, released in November 22, is now gaining a lot of attention from faculty and staff members here on campus. However, the University of Southern Mississippi's Office of the Provost is in the process of handling the use of students using ChatGPT. Right now, we haven't uh, considered it. I think individual faculty or are uh, concerned that students might use it in their uh, in their coursework but of course we have an academic integrity policy that says they shouldn't do that and we have a student success office that that monitors that so i think right now it's being handled through the associate provost office and it's not really on the agenda for the faculty senate at the moment ChatGPT is also a tool that pulls information written by others and forming a generic response to the question given. I think the major concern by many people is, is that ChatGPT will be abused. It will be utilized um, on college campuses to submit assignments. Um, and I think that concern is very legitimate. I also think that if you have played with ChatGPT, you can very quickly identify its shortcomings. It does not understand truth. Um, it, is, it works based on word probability. So it knows that there's a high probability that the word domestic follows gross and the, verse, and the word product to follows domestic. So it uses probability to construct um, writing or creatively. If you would like to try ChatGPT, please use with caution as this goes against academic integrity policies. For more on this story, 
please visit sm2media.com. I'm Stephanie Smith reporting for SM2 Media. On February 8th, the Mississippi Senate passed a bill that allows armed teachers in schools. Senate Bill 2079 permits the Department of Homeland Security to create and design a firearms training and licensure program for teachers working at schools that choose to participate. This bill is in response to the elementary school shooting in Uvalde, Texas last year. Some, including the Mississippi Association of Educators, worry about guns getting into the wrong hands and adding more duties to teachers beyond education. On Sunday afternoon, a US F-16 fighter jet shot down an unidentified flying object above Lake Huron. A senior official states it appeared to be octagonal with strings hanging off. This comes after the Chinese weather balloon crisis last week and the similar appearance of another unidentified object shot down in Alaska Friday. The Pentagon claims it likely wasn't a military threat, but it served as a flight hazard and had potential surveillance capabilities. The U.S. military is currently working to recover the object and learn more about the craft. According to Reuters, the death toll of the Turkey-Syria earthquake is over 41,000 people. Survivors are still being pulled from the rubble after being trapped for over a week. But hope to recover more is becoming bleak. Search and rescue teams have told reporters they expect the death count to rise much higher. Despite the grim situation, those willing to help from across the globe are still working to treat and assist survivors and their families. Welcome to the SMTV Sports Recap. I'm Omari Anderson. Southern Miss Athletics continue to thrive with good news around the nest for all the Eagles. Bouncing over to men's basketball, who have a record of 23-4, and four, are undefeated at home for 14 straight home games. Austin Crowley leads the men's team with an average of 16.9 points per game. At the beginning of the season, the Eagles were predicted to go the 14th seed in the Sun Belt Conference and barely had over 100 fans at their first game. The Eagles won the number one seed battle over the Raging Cajuns with a sold out crowd to witness it. Pickney put up 22 points for the Eagles and three other Eagles were in double figures to help clinch the win. The men also snagged a win over ULM this past Saturday. You can be sure to follow them as they travel to Mobile, Alabama on Thursday at 7 p.m. to face off against the South Alabama. Rolling on to the hardwood, we have the Lady Eagles with a 16-9 record led by Dominique Davis, who is averaging 17.3 points per game. The Lady Eagles went 1-1 one one in the two-game homestead this past weekend as they took a tough loss to Texas State. They were sure to redeem themselves with a much-needed win over Coastal Carolina. You can be sure to follow them as they travel to ATL to play Georgia on Thursday at 10 a.m. The much-anticipated baseball season will be in full swing this Friday at Pete Taylor Park. Those guys are coming in hot after a great season they had last year. They are ranked number 18 in the preseason polls, so make sure to catch them Friday at 4 p.m. versus Liberty. Running in, we have some personal bests and new school records. Dylan Evans takes fifth place in the men's 600-meter run on day one of the Music City Challenge in Nashville, Tennessee. And last the moment you've all been waiting for, this week's fourth street player of the week goes to Neftali Alvarez. He had 17 points, 4 assists, and 4 rebounds against the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. This has been Amari Anderson with your sports recap. Back to you. Coming up next, we have the community calendar and a great interview from Southern Miss today. Stay tuned.
For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Cause everything I touched in I am Santhony Smith and welcome to the Southern Miss Community Calendar. AASO presents its sixth annual Culture Legends Ball on February 24th in the Thad Cochran Center Ballroom 1. This event begins at 5.30 p.m. Four more attire is required. SMAC will be hosting The Sun Does Shine with speaker guest Ray Hitton on February 22nd at 6 p.m. in the Thad Cochran Center Ballroom. Student counseling services will have anxiety, friend, or foe on February 16th at 10 a.m. in the Dad Cochran Center room 229. Brunch will be served. The Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated is having Kappa Week this Thursday. They will host on learning how to avoid debt at Union Room G at 6 p.m. This is all for today, Golden Eagles. I am Sethany Smith, and this has been your Southern Miss Community Calendar. So what exactly is the study abroad program here at USM? Yeah, so we are made up of many programs. Uh, we have various opportunities for students, uh, whether that be a semester long, uh, two weeks to an entire month, uh, I mean, the to a whole academic year. So it really wow. just kind of depends on uh, the student as to which program is best for them. I always like to ask, where do you want to go? How long do you want to be gone? And what kind of credit do you want to earn? And with those three questions, pondering those will really help point you in the right direction of which program is best for you. Wow, that's, I know I saw a lot of the flyers <laughs> and a lot of the yeah. destinations are looking absolutely like fantastic. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, what are some of the locations that students can expect to travel to with this program? Yeah, so it just kind of depends. We do have um, several programs coming up really starting in May, and those are going to hit Vienna. They're going to hit Rome, um, Florence. We've got an internship program that's going to Dublin. Um, we've got big group going to London, Spain, France. It just keeps coming. And then if you want to wow. uh, spend a semester or that full academic year, then you can do one of our exchange programs. And we've got Ooh. 12 different partners all over the globe. Um, wow. So really, there are opportunities out there, um, just depending upon where you want yeah. to go. All sorts of locations. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and uh, Ms. Bunelis, I understand that you're the assistant director for the study abroad program. Can you tell us a little bit about your work? Yeah, well, it'd be easier to tell you what I don't do rather than what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, I've been in the office for several years and I started as a graduate assistant. So, I mean, I've done everything from, you know, the tabling to the to what I do now is really help um, manage our application system mm. and um, support with our scholarship programmings and, um, you know, really just being... Um, that a support system when it comes to risk management and things like that, because always safety and health is our number one priority for our students when they're traveling, right? Um, so just making sure all those boxes are getting checked where they need to be checked. Um, yeah, I'm really working closely with everyone in the office and pursuing that we're doing that. With an historic guest and a quick wrap up of the weather.
be sure to stay tuned. Good? Yep, I'm good. Okay. okay. If your husband gets lung cancer from smoking, be prepared to spend a lot of time together. Just not the way okay. either of you imagined. The people you love are worth quitting for. You can quit. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. At a time when misinformation is all too common on social media, we take great pride in bringing you the news that matters, that impacts your family, news you can trust. Local broadcast journalists bring you the facts, covering the stories breaking in our community and across the globe. Text TV to 52886 and let Congress know you depend on local journalism. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Raylani Branch is a name that many do not know. However, she is an important part of USM's history. She is among the first black students to enroll at USM. I recently sat down to talk with her about the monumental role she played in integrating the University of Southern Mississippi. So what led you to come to USM? The fact that by 1965 I realized that my high school education was not going to take me where I wanted to go. And Elaine, uh, Gwendolyn Elaine Armstrong, who was a high school student who applied here, was afraid to come alone. So the NAACP, Forest County NAACP, asked me if I would enroll and come out here. And believe it or not, we didn't have one single class together. However, we, we knew each other was on the campus. And they, the NAACP paid my tuition, but I didn't, with three children and a sick husband, I didn't have, uh, you know, money. I, I worked on campus. We got, uh, we, we were paid work study for a dollar and five cents, so an hour, a dollar and five cents an hour. We worked 20 hours, so we would take home approximately $17 and some change. And when I ran out of money, I'd walk back and forth home. And, and it's a good three, four miles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you entered USM, what were some problems that you had to face? Number one, we did not know anything about the campus. And the uh, FBI had asked us not to ever go to Wimpy's. Now, Wimpy's was like a hamburger joint. It was next to the post office on this end of what is now the hub. Um, so I told Elaine, Elaine, guess where we are? And she said, where? I said, we are in Wimpy's. And she just turned red. She said, we're not supposed to be here. And I said, I know, but it's too late now. We might as well sit here and enjoy it. But we really did not. I'm going to be very honest and give credit to probably Dr. McCain, who was the president at that time. He had, in a meeting, stated that school would be, classes would go on as usual. The Klan wanted to come on campus and burn a cross. And probably because he was very close to the Klan or the White Citizens Council, he told them, no, you will not burn a cross on our campus. Assembly went to class and did what we were supposed to do. She was younger than I was. I, I was married. An 18-year-old is in a whole different category. Um, but I, we never had, I never had uh, maybe one incident. Uh, we had to have two credits of PE at that time. And I was out on the baseball field, which is now Trent Lott Building and the 
new business building. And I, I'm not a sports person. I, um, I couldn't hit a ball or put a ball in a basket or none of that kind of stuff. But when I was up to bat, the ball, uh, someone yelled nigger from the back of the, uh, car, uh, the football field, the buildings, and uh, I hit the ball, a home run, and I never hit a ball up, up until then, and I haven't hit one since then. for the weather over the next few days? Well, just over the next few days, it's going to be really just important to keep in mind the weather for tomorrow because there's going to be some really intense thunderstorms. But after that, something you need to also remember is you won't have to worry about bringing that umbrella until next week, at least if you're in Hattiesburg. Despite not needing that umbrella until Tuesday, be sure to keep a jacket on you this weekend because it will be as low as 34 degrees on Saturday. If you plan on heading to Jackson this weekend, the weather in the capital city will be roughly the same as the hub city. And if you plan on going to New Orleans for a Mardi Gras day parade or whatever you want else, whatever else you want to do this weekend, right? It should be warmer, but also a little rainier. So be sure to get that uh, umbrella if you go to the uh, Big Nola. Thank you so much for watching SMTV. Be sure to subscribe to Southern Miss Student Media on YouTube and follow us on social media. You'll be sure to find a new episode of the show every other Wednesday evening. Stay tuned for our next episode, which airs on March 1st. This has been Stephanie Smith, Eric Grove, Jeterica Wilson, and Amari Anderson. As always, Southern Miss to, to the, the top! top. Looking for the latest SMTV news episode? Find us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Southern Miss Student Media. The University of Southern Mississippi Student Media Center is the heartbeat of the USM experience. The center is home to dozens of producers, writers, and visual artists of all types. In addition to news, entertainment, sports, music, and other programming, the center hosts a vibrant strategic communication division. It's made up of teams working on social media, advertising sales, graphics, and more. Everything is produced by students and for students under the guidance of the Student Media Center professional staff. The center is housed in USM's School of Media and Communication, just down the bricks from The Rock and the Student Union. School Director Ed Simpson says the Student Media Center serves as the loudspeaker for the USM student voice and the training ground for the next generation of media professionals. The Student Media Center is where our students get hands-on experience in real-world situations. That's because what we do serves real audiences and real clients. Whatever you see yourself doing, the Student Media Center has a place for you. We ask our students to find the truth and then tell it in a way that's compelling. When students produce something for a live stream or for the radio, they know they got to get it right. Working here in the Student Media Center, when we say hands-on, it's not a slogan, it's what we do. The Student Media Center is the voice of the Golden Eagles and home to the next generation of truth-tellers, storytellers, and all those with the energy and desire to express their hearts in the fields they've chosen.
join us.